morning hi everyone welcome to the stream hey Gandhi Andre how's everyone going hopefully you can hear me all right I just changed the settings of my microphone yet again still trying to get it right all right hey Sebastian How's it going? We're gonna give it a couple more minutes and we are getting started pretty soon. All right, just finishing the setup here. Hey, Mark. Hey, hola, Daniel. Cool. All right. I think I'm, I have everything. So the chat is working. All system go. All right. So um, sorry about last week. I had to change some last minute. Um, well, I had to do some last minute changes for a deadline. And um, I had to pull one of those all nighters that I haven't done for a while. <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah, I couldn't make it last week. But today we're going to be you hopefully making up for, making up for it so the idea is to do something Halloween related it's, you know we're in October so might as well do something like that uh, and hopefully in the in the process show you some cool stuff um, yeah some new kind of like I wouldn't say necessarily techniques but some things that might not be as obvious and I just been finding them like testing them uh, or that I found them while I was testing certain things um, especially with some of the new features in 2021 so i think it's pretty cool to to show you what I, um what you can achieve with that hey it looks like it's still the last stream title for shane oh is it let me just check All right, cool. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why the the title is different, but ah, it's me. <laughs> so you can see at, at the bottom what we're gonna be doing or what this session is is the make it happen in ZBrush anyway. Um, can you show how to wrap two different shapes together? Oh, that's a. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. Uh, as in, what do you mean by wrapping two shapes together? Cool, so I'm glad you like the, the guitar. All right, so I think we're gonna just get started now. Everything's working fine. So um, what I'm thinking, I mean, what I think we can do is some kind of like creepy Halloween character, creature, uh, pumpkin head type of thing. Um, I'm just thinking something along the lines of the, what's the name? Uh, uh, what's the main character from Tim's Burton? The Christmas, ah, uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack, like the the title, like the stylized character Jack from the Nightmare Before Christmas, something like that, but with a pumpkin head. I don't know, just something different. We'll we'll come up with a design. Uh, like hard surface, if you want to stick separate parts onto a body part or something. Um. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is what you mean, but you uh, there's many ways to do it in in Zbrush depending on exactly what what you want to do. Um, you could just before we start, um, I'll just show you. Uh, you can just grab any any insert brush. Um, uh, 
No, this one is not going to have enough. Uh, you need to make sure that it has enough resolution, whatever you're going to insert, so that you can wrap it around. What? The problem with these ones is that they're pretty, pretty low res. I don't have anything. Hmm. I'll just make one. So gonna duplicate duplicate that make it a Q cube I'm not sure if this is what what you mean but I'll just show you very quickly the worst thing. All right. Um, all right. Something like that. Just imagine this is a hard surface piece, I guess. And then you can just convert that into an insert brush. Now we can delete that. And you go to a surface like this. And obviously you can just click and drag to add it, right? But that's just going to add it like that. So if you want to wrap this around whatever surface you're using, uh, what you can do is go to the brush palette. Let's just drop down here on the right. Go to modifiers and in the modifiers you have this projection strength. Um, that projection strength will basically project whatever you have selected into whatever surface you have. So you can set this to 100, click and drag. Now it is projected. Right, how embedded this is, so it's following that curve. How projected this is, or how embedded in the surface that is, it's controlled from the depth. So I can, you know, set it up like that, and then, oops, do this. Hang on. Maybe this is too much. There we go. So yeah. That's, I guess, the, the easiest way to, to go about it. If you have it as a sub-tool, it's even easier. You just use the project tool. So uh, I'm going to go back. Not that much. So if you have it in a separate subtool and you want to do the same thing, just project it. Um, well, now with the with the new tools, you can actually use dynamic, for example, if you want to project it. So let's say you can take dynamic in this case or dynamics, and you can just um, calculate collision, the collision volume, and then just use the gizmo. And hang on, let me change it. Gizmo, where is it? Oh, I need to update my, my UI to include all the new stuff. Here, the transpose cloth. So you can take that and then just move it and that's it. Obviously, that's gonna you know, change the, um, the integrity of that, that piece. But if you wanna preserve it a little bit more, you can just go to dynamics, uh, maybe increase the iterations and the firmness as well. Right, so that's just another way if you wanna deform it. If not, if you wanna keep it like a solid piece, um, you can just use the projection, which is the Z project here. So this is a brush that you can just take, and whatever is visible in the canvas uh, will be affect or it will be taken into consideration. So you can take that and do that. Hang on. So projected, but obviously destroyed the whole thing. Um, the other one is the match. Uh, I'm just thinking about the the other ones. Uh, where is it now? <laughs> Let's just filter it. Yeah, matchmaker. 
So you can use this one as well. And that's kind of like a click and drag. That will, will This option will actually preserve the, the thickness a bit more. So you can do that. I don't know if you saw that. So it's kind of like a drag, but it, it's just gonna match the, the curvature. So that's another way to do it. So there's many different ways to, to go about it. I personally wouldn't use, unless I need to, um, I wouldn't use this technique. I would prefer to have something like a base, like this, the sphere, and then go through the process of masking and extracting. For me, it's just more intuitive, kind of like taking a piece like this or mask a piece like that and then go, um, well, I, I do have a, a macro for that, but you can just extract it here. Right, and say, yeah, accept that, clear the masks. And then you have this piece with polygroups that you can, you know, polish or whatever, or remesh if you want to. And obviously that's gonna follow whatever you have. Anyway, uh, <laughs> hopefully that gives you some ideas. Let's um, yeah, let's let's start with the with the creature or the more sculpting thing, um, and I'm gonna show you a couple of things that are pretty cool. So um, let's start with some radial symmetry. I'm gonna start. With, I'm gonna do a very simple pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin. I'm gonna start with radial symmetry in the Y, so in the vertical axis, and we can uh, do maybe 16. Let's see. Select the clay brush. Yeah, I think 16 might be good. Uh, we can change it later. And I'm gonna dynamesh this. I'm also gonna unify just in case, that's good. All right, so I'm gonna work with something like that. Again, we're gonna keep it very simple. Uh, at least the, the process of sculpting, just the good old fashioned sculpting. Nothing, nothing fancy, uh, except the the radial symmetry. But that's not a big thing. And then we can just, you know, I'll show you some other techniques. And we're gonna try to make it not as as generic. We're gonna do something more interesting. This is a, a very relaxing technique. It's like pottery. Actually, I do have, now that I, I remember, in the Sivers Guides, there is a there is a post. It's um relatively old, but it, it's about, you know, using radial symmetry and I create like a, like a still life type of thing just with radial symmetry techniques, if you wanna check it out. Um, and it's, you know, pretty relaxing thing to do, <laughs> just playing with this. I use this a lot, especially for, well, everything that has any sort of concentric or a, or an axis that I can use in that tubular shape. Um, I use that quite a bit. Um, also for painting eyes or sculpting the irises, I use this a lot as well. All right, I think as a base, this is all right. I mean pretty generic, but we're gonna work on some of the, the details. Let's redynamish with a slightly liar, larger resolution. All right, and I'm gonna bring in the damn standard. And I'm gonna reduce the smoothness or the intensity from the smooth brush. All right, something like this. Again, super generic. Uh, but what we can do now is kind of like block the the actual head, um, and then start with some of the details. You know, like um, 
let's get rid of radial symmetry. We'll do that afterwards properly, but you know we can do the eyes and an interesting kind of like laugh like that. Uh, but let's make this a bit more interesting. So um, again, there's many different ways to to go about how you can deform and, and block the the shape of the creature or the head. I'm just gonna use the deformers. So from the gear icon here in the gizmo, we can use something like let's see. Um, we can try we can try the soft deformer first. Yeah, we can try we can try that. So the soft deformer is gonna create some sort of lattice and it's just weird so let me reset that or delete it yeah so i'm gonna reset the gizmo holding the alt key and resetting the the rotation and i'm gonna center it to the center of this piece all right don't know why it was like that but now it should give me a, a pretty straight lattice that's that's more like it um you know like if you ever use anything remotely similar to this lattice that that will deform like a cage that will deform whatever object is within it. You can just click on these points and you know generate this, um, and it's super useful, especially because this is a, I mean, like the name says, it's a soft deformer, so it's not gonna be very harsh the transition, uh, and you can use these cones, the yellow ones, to add more. So in this case, I want to have at least another line right in the middle so that we can make it a bit more chunky, like that, and. The rest is, I think, is fine. We're not going to touch that. Um, and you can manipulate multiple, multiple these points at once. Um, right now, everything is, every point of the lattice is available for distortion. So if I just click on this on the Gizmo 3D and scale it, it's just going to scale everything. Like you, you know, if you just put the the pivot there and scale. But you can hold Control and mask a few points, right? And you see only the white ones, the ones that have the, the little dot there, um, are going to affect whatever you, you're using, right? So because I, ha I sort of masked the ones at the top and the, at the bottom, I can use this soft deformer to scale just this area, like so, right? And it's different from doing similar things with a, let's say, a mask, right? Because you can think, I mean, what I'm doing, you could basically mask the actual object at the top and bottom and use the same technique to scale this. But this is going to give you a very soft, very nice transition that you can also, you know, tweak um, a bit further. So I'm going to scale this like that and maybe in the Y axis. So we start to get this more of a, you know, more realistic shape, I would say. And we can click on accept and that's it. And because we use um, a relatively symmetrical scaling or approach, uh, we should still have the the ability to keep working on a um, yeah on a radial symmetry basically. Although we might not um, we might not need it. I'm gonna bring in the hang on the deformers again, and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take um, let's see maybe the taper deformer. Okay, let's look let's do that one and I'm just gonna scale it like so right rather than and I think that yeah pumpkins should <laughs> just wing it here but um, yeah something like that and then you can use basically what these cones are doing are just squishing things towards the center of that cone uh, like a taper <laughs> and and then you can use the the white cone to um, to change a little bit of the of the curvature of that. Uh, so you know it's at the moment it's kind of like the default, but you can make it really sharp or really smooth. So just by moving this, you can change this completely. Uh, so for example, if you want to do multiple of these and variating them quite a bit. This is something you can do, right? You just set like a basic shape and then use this type of deformers to, you know, in a couple of clicks, just change the, the shape and then you get a bunch of them. So all I want to do is fine tune that curvature a bit. All right, gear icon and accept that, right? And maybe you can just squish it a bit more.
all right cool so that's the that's the head um <laughs> roughly done and i'm going to show you a pretty cool technique to um to create kind of like the holes and, and all of that uh but before we do that let's just go ahead and and work on something else like the you know like whatever the stem or whatever this thing that goes on top of the pumpkin is so i'm gonna just duplicate that pumpkin push it up like this scale it down scale it up like that maybe rotate it 180 degrees um, the only reason i duplicated and did that is just so that we can get sort of like these ridges already working for us but you can just start with a sphere if you wanted to um let's see all right i'm gonna read dynamish and remember that dynamish is based on the scale of the object so because i reduce this this object and i still have the same amount of the same resolution as the big one this ultimately is going to be um you know less less polygon so right now i have one hundred thousand. If I redynamesh, I end up with eleven thousand because it is based on on the resolution. Uh, let me bring in my big pen. Hey, Paulo. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Um, hola, watchy, watchy. Some of these names are like really hard to to try to even pronounce. Um, I mean the the nicknames. Um, Tienes canal? Do you have a YouTube channel? I don't. I don't. I, I mean, I think um, ages ago. I think for the uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is a there is a channel with my name that the Pixology guys put together for. I think it was for the presentation I did on 2018. So it's been there since then. But I actually haven't used it. I, I don't really. I haven't had a chance to to start it really. Um, but I do. If you go to this, I mean, these are in YouTube. Um, if you wanted to, if you go to the Seabridge Guides website, all of my tutorials are in there. Um, yeah, they're just not hosted in in YouTube. You can watch them in Vimeo as well. Um, all right. So, uh, what I was gonna say, by the way. So in terms of Dynamesh, in case you didn't know that, um, it works based on the scale of the object. So the easiest way to think about it in this resolution that I have here on the Dynamesh is that when, you, when you're going to use Dynamesh, it's going to basically create a grid like that. Right, so it's a grid. Um, so depending on the scale of the object, right, those, those dots or those, uh, polygons, those points on those polygons, uh, will be equivalent to whatever they, that grid catches. That's how I think about it, and it's just easier. So that means that, right, if I have, let's just do a couple more around there. Yeah, so that means that this polygon, or the dynamic resolution based on this a slider here is going to create the size of this polygon this big right it's going to be exactly the same size as one in here i mean this is horrible but actually let's just delete that so a polygon this size here based on this resolution is going to be exactly the same size in here right so obviously depending on the on the size it's just going to it's going to change the the end the end result of the dynamic so it's just think about it as um as a grid, right? So you can obviously, because you have in this case two different subtools, you can variate the resolution and you know the size of the polygons in this small one. You know you can increase it to, I don't know, three hundred, and then you're ultimately reducing the size of that polygon, and then you're gonna have heaps of resolution in this one. But then if you apply the same three hundred resolution to this one, that size of that polygon is gonna be the same in this one. So it's gonna be super tiny, and you end up with triple the the amount of polygons. Anyway, I don't know if that makes sense, but I thought I I just share it. Uh, going back to this thing, what we can do is a, a bit of sculpting, but in radial symmetry. So I'm going to enable that again, and in the y-axis. There we go. So uh, that was actually not too bad. 
<laughs> but I'm going to use the move uh, brush just because I want to show you the the radial symmetry works perfectly fine with the move brush uh, and this is why I find it to be you know quite useful especially for what I said like pottery type of thing is there a way to offset the symmetry on the radial groovers grooves um, you mean like to make it less symmetric it's that the question so it doesn't look as symmetric I'm gonna do that here. I don't know if that's what you mean, but um, because I'm using the move brush, I can do this type of thing, kind of like twisted, right? So I'm gonna do something like that. You can also use the the masking brushes. So I'm gonna use the mask lasso actually. And I'm gonna enable. Oh, I do already have Accu Curve. Right, something like that. I don't know if that's what you meant, but the fact that I'm using the move brush, it allows me to to twist it a little bit. Although I'm gonna do that without the former as well. Just wanna get the initial shape right, and I think that's fine. Right? We're gonna stylize it a little bit, but as a starting point, it works. Let's just mask this a little bit and we can push this up just to make that this part here at the bottom a bit thicker. And you know, we can redynamesh, we will lose a lot of these details, or we can increase the resolution as I mentioned just before about 300, and we should get something a bit more, a bit better. Um, all right, so let's, yeah, let's clean this up a little bit with uh, radial symmetry and now we can get out of that symmetry and we can go ahead and start you know working on some more feature piece or like a piece that looks less symmetrical so maybe from the top here I'm gonna use the move brush to add a couple of these sort of points like that And then you can use the damp standard brush. It's going to solo mode. And just exaggerate. I'm actually gonna use a custom brush with a bit more resolution. Yeah, so I have this brush, um, this knife butter. It's just gonna give me a sharper version of that uh, damp standard brush a little bit faster. And this is what we need for this type of asset. Uh, so this is a brush that you know has some custom settings based on the, I think I did it based on the uh, slash brush, not the standard one. Can't remember now. Um, it will tell you anyway. Oh, based on the displays brush. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a brush if you. If you're curious about it, that comes with the the clay pack. So the one one of the ones that I used to do, you know, the the indentations and the cuts in in the clay renders. So I'm gonna smooth this area and start variating this a bit more, so it's not perfect. Just to make it a bit more organic. But again, uh, you can totally do this. That I'm whatever I'm doing here with the with the standard brushes. The the damp standard brush is perfect for for this. You can just increase the the strength of it, just for the for the sake of saving a bit of time, and you know, get a, getting these things a bit sharper from the beginning. I use this brush. Okay, so that should be good. 
as a yeah as a starting point i'm going to use this standard brush and that's just to add a bit of volume to these crevices especially the ones towards the bottom of this piece so otherwise I, i'm trying to make them look like they have volume right otherwise they will just look like cuts which is you know probably that's how they the pumpkins are i guess <laughs> So probably they're fine, um, but yeah, just a bit of volume with the, the standard brush. And that's about it. Um, I can go ahead and also, with the standard brush, just redefine this border a little bit. We're gonna pinch it in a second, I'll show you. Uh, but, you know, these are just normal standard sculpting techniques, there's nothing there's no like uh there's no wow factor <laughs> involved in this in this process just good old fashioned sculpting i'm going to use the same technique here but pushing it with the alt key all right something like that there we go and as i said maybe a bit more here at the bottom. Right, so I can use the pinch brush now and I can pinch this just to sharpen that edge a bit. And this is a, a really cool way to, I mean, it's a, it's a useful brush in, in many situations like I'm doing right now, but if you're doing like hard surface modeling, and you use the edge polish, for example, and then you um, fine tune the edges with this pinch brush. It's really, really cool. All right, something like that. And then we can go ahead and use the inflate just to tighten some of these crevices a little bit. So I'm just pressing very softly on my tablet, not to not to increase the the volume much, uh, but because I'm targeting the the crevices, and this brush makes the polygons go, you know, inflate or move along the normals, then I can sort of tighten those those gaps a bit. All right, let's say we're happy with that. Let's do a quick save. Let's check the chat. Uh, is there a way to off? Okay, so it's yeah, that's basically what. I'm what I'm showing at the moment. Um, we can also use the trim dynamic. So this is already starting to give it a bit more of that sort of, you know, stylized look, but we'll probably do that afterwards anyway. So I just wanna give it a tiny bit of this flatness. All right. Um, when will you release your mushroom creatures course for beginners? Uh, it is coming. It's just like I said, it's been it's been a long time in the process, in the making, um, and you know I'm like towards the end of the process. I'm about to release it, uh, but I want everything to be you know perfect. <laughs> I seen um, you know all the the effort and everything that I've been putting towards that course. I don't want to just like release it just to make it. Um, available i want to make sure that once you join once you're in there you feel totally confident that um you can just take your zero skills to the next level uh, because again it's all about the process and you know the, the systematic approach that i take to it so i want to make sure that once you're in you have no further questions basically um so yeah i'm just in the process of setting it everything up in a in a very nice and you know easy to follow environment uh, online so it's not just it's not just about downloaded videos it's like a whole it's like the whole package basically so it is ready as in like the videos have been recorded i finalized that i have edited everything now i'm in the process of putting it all together as a proper proper course um so it's it should be coming pretty soon um before that i'm doing um an enrollment i'm gonna open the enrollment for the extra mile as well so that's coming first uh, this month 
and then I'm opening or I'm hopefully creating the 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 space to open the um, the UCG. But yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. I'm I'm really excited about it, and I'm sure that anyone that's that wants to get into Zerosh is gonna find it useful. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start doing what I usually do with the you know when I like like a basic shape like this. I'm gonna create a folder, call it the OR sort originals, and I'm gonna drop that here at the top, hide it. So now I can take this duplicate and you know if I mess it up or if I don't like it, I mean I can go back in you know with the undo histories, but you know I can also use the the other one. All right, so um, let's bring in the gizmo. Uh, we can use something like the twist, the former now. Just give this a, a bit of a twist, just to make it more interesting like that. Maybe that's too much. That's all right. Um, and then let's accept that. And now I'm going to take the bend curve. So the bend curve allows you to create points along the the volume on, of an object. It works a lot better if the object is kind of like a tubular shape, like it's uh, consistent in a way. In this case, we have this tapered shape, but you know, it might work. So I'm going to change the, the axis to the Y axis with this cone. So red, green, and blue. So obviously we, we want the green, the, the Y axis. And then I'm going to increase the amount of points I think six to start with, right? Um, yeah, and then we can just take these points and go nuts. Right. Um, we can also take these points, by the way, and we can scale them and, and twist them even more. Right, so we can do this type of thing. And we can scale them. So all these cones um, might, if you haven't used this type of deformance, might look a little bit, you know, crazy uh, to, you know, at the beginning, but you know they're very intuitive, and uh, as soon as you start moving or manipulating one of those, you know what, like you will see what they do. You can hover over, and it will tell you at the bottom of the screen. It's not very visible, but if I hover over this, it tells you it would scale. This one will squeeze, so it's just gonna flatten in one in in this direction, and this one is gonna twist. So right now I'm twisting this this point and 109 degrees. So it will tell you anyway. All right, I think I'm just gonna scale this one a bit more like this. All right, and then I'm gonna click on accept. And now I can bring in my move brush without symmetry, obviously we, we don't have that luxury of the radial symmetry anymore, but we can just start placing this a bit better. And we'll come back to this and keep refining the the sculptural part, I guess, um, in a second. So I think I lost my front. Let me see. Where's the set axis? Oh, <laughs> it's this way. All right. So I'm gonna take my gizmo, reset the rotation. I'm gonna click on this icon to move everything at once, and I'm just gonna rotate this 180, just because. Based on my floor, the Z axis is sort of like pointing in this direction. So uh, this is this is the front of the of the pumpkin, um, and it's just good to keep that in mind when you're working on a let's say in a character, and for the most part everything is symmetrical, so that you know that when you want to mirror and weld things and that sort of thing is pointing in the right direction. So yeah, this is the front. Um, let's go ahead and start with. Let's see. Yeah, let's start with the with the face and and all of that. So um, we can do a couple of things. We can make like the typical, you know, 
cut cutouts for the for the eyes and the and the mouth, for example, in the pumpkin, and then yeah, and then just sculpt around it. Um, we can also you know try to do something more like a character type of thing, where there is an actual mouth bag, and maybe I can do both actually, so that I can show you both um, techniques. I mean, one is more interesting than the other one. The other one is just sculpting. So I'm gonna duplicate. Chuck that in here. All right. Um, let's enable symmetry. And what I'll do is I'm gonna use the masking tool. Ah, oh, I have the mask lasso. Let's use the mask pen. Oh, see, see, this is what I meant. Um, hang on, let's do a mirror and well. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it right in the middle, but this one, sorry. Yeah, so I wanted to have this right in the middle, so I'm gonna just take this whole thing Oops. Center. Um, it's not gonna be perfect, but just wanna put this roughly there, uh, so that this line of the pumpkin matches the, you know, this the axis, and then I can try mirror and weld it, and it's just gonna give me this, so that I can work with symmetry at least at this point, and then we we break the symmetry. So I'm just cleaning that. Uh, so yeah, that was just a simple mirror and weld, but. But that's it. Okay. So now we can hold the control key with symmetry and it should work a bit better. So I'm gonna kinda like determine the the width of the mouth and just make it kinda like semi open. Like so. Right, and then I'll show you a different technique that is a little bit more interesting for the eyes. Um, let me see the chat. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in there. Hey, Swag, how you doing? Is it okay working with Zerational Laptop? UI looks terrible. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends on the laptop, of course. But yeah, uh, I mean, I use. I have my my laptop is my um, the Wacom uh, Studio Pro, so the one that is kind of like a like a Cintiq but mobile, and that's absolutely fine. It work like it, it's my my preferred method of sketching now. I just sit in front of the TV or whatever and start like, sketching on the sofa, and it's totally fine. I mean, you can arrange it in any way you want the UI. That's the great part of it. This looks super nice. Ah, oh, thanks, man. All right, so this is gonna be the, you know, the the mouth bag. So I'm gonna invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas. Um, in fact, let's turn off symmetry for the time being so that we can work on this piece. And yeah, it's looking good. So there's a couple of things that I wanna do. Um, so let me just show you something. So if you look at the pumpkin from the top, so this is a top view, right? Um, the masking that we did is about there, right? From this point to this point. So ZBrush is obviously gonna take, when I center this to the unmask areas, it's gonna center it based on the volume. So that means from this point to this point, but then there's a point here. So it's gonna assume that what you mask or unmask is this volume so it's going to create that you know that point right in the middle of that volume so that's when that's where the the gizmo is right now right so you could push it you know holding the old key and and move it to reposition the pivot to put it around there uh or something like that however what i want to do is flatten that um this mouth bag or this piece here flatten it towards this point so essentially, I'm going to take this and just push it down so that it's flat like this, 
right? And then we can use, um, you know, other simple techniques to soften and redynamesh into uh, basically build that. So this uh, it's a little bit messy, but you'll see when I when I actually do it. All right. So now this is in the center of this unmask area. I'm gonna take the uh, Z axis, push it like so. So now this is the the flattening that I was just mentioning, right? So it's now flat that piece, right? And now we can just take this and push it in. So, scale it a bit. Right? So, I think that looks okay. Um, you can enable symmetry now and use the smooth brush to smooth that. Uh, maybe invert the, the mask and smooth it a, a bit more, like so. All of these needs to be re, re sculpted and, and, and tweaked, but that's just part of the process. So, I think. I'm going to invert the mask and I'm just going to show you another process or another technique that is pretty cool and I use this all the time to create um, you know mouth bags or anything that is inside a geometry that is kind of like hard to sculpt because if I want to you know tweak this and make it more like a rounded shape you know I can start doing this and moving around and it's going to be a little bit tricky um, so what I can do is Let's turn on the polyframe as well. It's not too bad the distortion, so I can get away with you know keeping this as it is right now. Um, but if you have a lot of distortion, you can clear the mask, redynamish, and use the technique that I'm going to show you um, with a new mask. So you'll have to manually mask the areas that you want to keep. But I think I can get away with this. All right, so I'm going to go into solo mode, and if you go to the display properties, you have these double and flip. Uh, buttons here so this one is basically showing the you know if if it is enabled it's showing you two sides of a single mesh so let's say oh no that's not what I wanted so if you have something that is uh, an open geometry for instance and you go to the other side um, right now Zbrush is not showing you the other the other side of the polygons is only showing you the the way that the polygons or the normals are facing the way that the f normals of the polygons are facing the camera in a way so right now these ones are behind or the the internal normals so if you click on double that's basically it it just shows you both sides and this is a single sided mesh right doesn't have any thickness i mean it does but you know what I mean <laughs> in this view it doesn't um, anyway so this is important for the technique because if I just do this, right? Let's turn this off. We can take the normals and and flip the normals. So if I click on flip normals, now I'm only seeing the inside of the model, right? So I can click double, and do, this looks exactly the same as what we had before. The difference is that the normals are now pointing inwards. So the trick here is really taking the double off with the flip normals so all the normals of the polygons are facing inwards so that's why we look we see this really weird you know shape um, and in most cases like if you see this that's an issue and you just need to go ahead and flip the normals to to make it work uh, but in this case I just want to do it intentionally or see it like this so that I can rotate around and I can actually see kind of like the flipped or like an invert or negative version of what um, I've been working on, which is this mouth bag. So from here, I can just a lot easier, you know, to sculpt. And I can smooth all of this and see what is going on. That's basically what I, the reason I did that. Um, I'm going to hold control and click once on the mask just to blur it a little bit so that I can smooth this a, a bit more and, and work more on the on the rounded shape of this mouth bag so this is a, a, just a cool way to produce these type of assets how are we doing with time okay we got about a like we're halfway through and we haven't finished the head so I'm gonna move a little bit faster so that we can at least block this and the oh maybe we'll do the, the body later in another stream but, you know, maybe uh, we can add some polypaint and stuff like that so that, that you guys can 
go away and, and do it as well. All right. Now we can go ahead and flip back the normals. And then we see the effect of that um, of that technique. That's great. So I'm going to invert that that mask now. Now we can actually clear the mask. doesn't need to be there anymore. Uh, I'm going to redynamish and smooth all of that. So now we just have a more polygons for these stretchy areas. There we go. And I'm going to bring in the inflate brush and it's just going to give some thickness to the, let's say, the lips of this pumpkin. Um, you can also use the inflate brush, by the way, to um, inflate and, and just follow the same technique, the same idea. So let's say if we flip that again into solo mode, um, you can also press the, you know, a bit harder here to to inflate this. And that's just basically pushing it along the normals. So that's also another way to, you know, make this a little bit larger in a way. All right, I'm going to flip that back. Zolo. And redynamish that. Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, before we create some teeth and, and, and all of that, let's um, let's do the eyes. And I'll show you a pretty cool technique. So I'm um, just thinking maybe Maybe it might be a good idea. Nah, let's just do the eyes first. I think it's fine. So, um, let me see the check first. Question, when you use the Sculptus Pro with subdivision, um, you have to delete the higher one and then use the Sculptus. That's the process. And then remesh the Geo and project the details to the new one. Um, so Sculptris Pro won't work if you have subdivision. You can delete the highest one or the lowest one, up to you. Obviously, if you're trying to do details, keeping the highest subdivision level would be the, the way to go. Um, and then, yeah, you, you use Sculptris Pro, it will obviously destroy the geometry, as in it's not a clean geometry anymore, but you have those details. And then what you do is duplicate that mesh, um, re remesh it, make sure that the topology is at least more consistent, subdivide again and then project those details so that's one way to do it but if you already have subdivision i don't i don't see the the point of using a sculptures pro because you you should have subdivision or in an ideal world you have subdivision once you have a clean mesh or a clean base mesh so let's say right now this dynamesh object i wouldn't subdivide it there's no there's no real advantage of subdividing this i prefer obviously to increase the dynamic resolution and redynamic and keep adding details it's until i'm happy with some of those you know primary and secondary shapes that are done that i will duplicate this remesh it project the details and then um, go into more high frequency details so i would use sculptures pro in combination with dynamic so if i don't want to go crazy with the amount of points right that i have in dynamic in terms of resolution I will bring in the Sculptures Pro right now and, and add details to the Dynamesh and then go to the other process that I just mentioned. Um, yeah, let, let's do the eyes. So for the eyes, um, I'm going to go ahead and append... Um, let's see... Let's append this cone. I think it has uh, the shape that we need going to solo mode. And I'm just going to edit it a bit wanna use the mask so control and mask that bring in the gizmo hold control and whoops the other way around hold control and extrude that All right so it's just yeah it's just a cone but we're gonna use this with the booleans anyway so let's go out of solo and I'm going to 
put I'm gonna order this so that the bullions work a little bit better and I'm gonna rotate this uh, like so we, we can play with the with the shape in just a second but something roughly like that for the eyes right I don't know maybe yeah something like that and I'm gonna work on one side and then mirror to the other and that's another reason why I made sure that everything like the face is pointing towards the z-axis okay so uh, working with booleans is super cool and this is a technique that I just found to be really helpful um, with the um, with the new tools from 2021 right so I want to turn off the polyframe and just turn off the, the gizmo just to show you um, so now this is a, a shape that is sort of intersecting the, the pumpkin, right? And booleans are super easy to use. You just need to keep a couple of things in mind that uh, the order does matter, uh, or you can create what's called star groups, but we're not getting into that. This is going to be pretty simple. So if I convert this mesh to subtract, or a boolean to subtract the that volume is going to affect everything that is on top of it right so at this point this thing is not no nowhere near this piece so it's not going to affect it really um, but if for some reason it was intersecting it would affect it as well so that's why it's important to have everything kind of like in a in a hierarchical way if it is intersecting i just want to avoid it what you would do is take that piece and put it below it right so now if i convert this into a um, boolean thing it's only going to affect the top or, or whatever is on top of it so that's pretty much it and if you want to know more about booleans i, I have um, a pretty extensive series on the zeros guides um, and we created kind of like a hard surface hard surface sci-fi radio type of thing um, and i covered all those things that i just mentioned in a, you know in more detail Anyway, so let's take this into a boolean. So just enabling that, nothing happens because we have to enable booleans. I have it here in my UI. So I'm gonna enable booleans and there we go. So now we have this, you know, clipping, right? But, so this is great. This is awesome. But it, we're not getting any, you know, the, the thickness of what the the pumpkin would would be, right? Like usually, you have like a hollow thing and it's like thickness and all of that so there's many ways again to approach this process you can uh, for example redynamize the whole thing first then just cut some of the eyes out and then create thickness for it that sort of thing so that's that's totally fine i just want to show you a more interactive way that i found to to be really cool um before i do anything in fact let's go into solo mode I'm going to turn this triangle thing into a dynamish as well and smooth it. And the, the only reason I'm doing this is because I will be able to play with the with the shapes a little bit more uh, because I have more resolution. So if I don't want a very sharp corner of this eye, I can just push this. And I'm actually just moving and tweaking the the triangle piece and I can smooth that move it like so right so that's the only reason I do that and you can just work with dynamish all you want now obviously this is just sort of clipping into or extracting or boolean the the pumpkin but we don't have that thickness so the way that I found to be like really cool and like I said, a more interactive way is to use the thickness from the dynamic subdivision. So basically, if I select this pumpkin, right, this is a, a, a solid piece or it's, it's a water tight, right? There is no, there's no gaps, but it's a still a mesh that we can add thickness to, right? It's just that in more traditional, I don't know, like the way that I think it was uh, conceive that use of the thickness is for like clothing and you know it was introduced when when the dyna dynamics were introduced so it was meant to be kind of like an easy way to add thickness to a piece of cloth and and have it in, interacting in that way 
but you can still add the same thickness to a solid piece. So if we go to the dynamic palette and enable dynamic subdivision, I'm going to take all the smoothness down because I'm not interested in subdividing the dynamesh. That's not what I want to do with this dynamic. Um, all I want to do is add thickness. So I can just do this and you see that it's kind of like inflating everything. So I'm just going to add a little bit. 0.01 right uh, which is great so if you look at the you know the um, the polyframe I'm not adding any subdivision all I'm doing is adding thickness however because this is a watertight piece that doesn't have any holes or anything you don't see that thickness but that dynamic thickness is there and it's just a preview if I turn this off you see it sort of like shrinks back down so in a way let's see if Right, so this is the original. And if I enable dynamic, it's very it's very small. Let's increase the thickness so you can see there. So this would be the thickness. So this is dynamic enable, right? So you have that little gap in there, but there's no way to see that, right? There's no way to to visualize that thickness because it's a watertight piece. That's what I'm really getting at. However, let's say this back to, uh, let's leave it at point 0.2 just so that you can see and then we'll tweak it. So if you go back now and get out of solo, because we have this in a Boolean thing, now you see that gap. Right? Oh no, um, oops, something happened. Uh, <laughs> working with Booleans when I'm streaming is uh, virtually impossible so it's gonna get closer so you can see like this and then enable it so you see now we have that gap and this is a is, is a hollow area and you can see that thickness or like that wall around the pumpkin which is pretty cool right so you have that thickness and that thickness is a dynamic thickness so we can go to the dynamic subdivision change that and you see you're changing that thickness, but you can actually visualize it in a watertight mesh that we're just previewing. We're previewing two things. We're previewing a booleans, because we haven't applied the booleans, so we can move this thing around, and we're previewing the thickness with the dynamics of division, right? So it's, it's great in that sense. We can add more thickness, right? Um, you can use the offset to sort of like push that thickness inwards. So minus 100 is just gonna push it in. Uh, just keep in mind that it's doing everything uh, uniformly, basically. So in areas like the like the lips, for example, it's actually going to intersect because of the, you know, it's a consistent thickness. So I'm going to set it to zero. Setting it to zero basically adds the same amount um, towards the outside as to the inside. And then we can take take the thickness and I think... I think this one is not too bad. 0 0.03, right? I'm gonna go back to this guy. So now we have thickness and we have this interactive way to, you know, manipulate it. So if I take, let's do a quick save just in case. So if I take this um, this element that I'm using to generate that, you know, cut into the pumpkin, I can move it around. Right, and as I do that, I'm I'm basically visualizing that border, which is awesome. Right, so you can create really cool, interesting things just by doing that. Um, I'm gonna keep it simple again. Just want to show you that that's um, that's an option, basically. Right, um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy with this. So what I'll do is I'm gonna duplicate this and or mirror it and weld it. So if I click mirror and weld, now I have the two eyes of the pumpkin. Brilliant, and I'm gonna create or yeah, I'm gonna build the um, the boolean, and then I'm gonna redynamesh everything with the thickness so that we actually have everything in a single mesh with dynamesh, and we can keep you know editing, we can refine the borders and all of that, right? So to do that, we can um, I'm gonna duplicate this pumpkin, chuck it into the originals. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this one boolean. 
so that I remember that this is the boolean folder and I'm going to put the head and the pieces that, I'm, that are coding through to generate the, those eyes. And the way that this works again is super simple. I'm going to click on this um, gear icon of the folder and I'm going to click on boolean folder uh, or you have two options, boolean folder, folder and boolean with subdivision or s dynamic subdivision, sorry. So if I click boolean folder, all I'm going to get is the effect of um, the eyes scoring through the model, right? Nothing else. If I click on Boolean with subdivision, I'm going to get the coding through the eyes, right? The eyes, the gap of the eyes. But I'm, uh, Sirius also is going to take into account whatever settings we set up in the subdivision, right? Which in this case is just adding thickness. So if I click on this, we're going to get a pretty cool looking piece, obviously. Now it's showing me both um, things, so I'm going to toggle Boolean off. Let's put this one here at the top and select the new piece. So if I turn Polyframe, now this is, you know, your normal geometry. We can redynamesh it. We have these, you know, uh, polygroups, so we can take advantage of that uh, as well if we wanted to, let's say, go into the subdivision approach and that sort of thing, which I'm not probably going to do right now. But now we have that gap right um, and it's all you know it's very simple you can set it up beforehand and if you like this you can continue working on it um, so yeah you could have you could have done the same thing with the with the mouth I just wanted to show you kind of like the two two techniques I guess all right let's see if there is any question in the chat and then we continue with the sculpting of this guy hopefully yeah we have time to finalize a bit more of a blocking and make it this guy a bit more interesting and maybe some poly paint. <clears throat> uh, can you briefly explain what are what what normals are and flip normals? Um, I'm not sure if I if you missed what I just talked about that. Uh, but basically, normals is just in the is just the the direction at which the polygons are pointing at. Again, if you go to the zero guides, like th this is um, what I would say is a, a very basic concept. I mean, it's it's not that um, is obviously if you don't know about it, it's it's like like anything else, right? Uh, but it's like one of those basic concepts that it's important to get right at to understand, um, especially if you're getting into three D. So if you go to these um, to the zero guides website and you go to the start here, it should be the first thing on the menu. Um, there is a there's a thing called the 3D lingo, like right. It's like a a bunch of terms that are used in in 3D that are pretty basic but important to know. If you go to that, it's kind of like a library of very you know concise and um, easily explained concepts with images. And I cover all of that. What are the normals? You know what is a you know a vertex? All of those things. So you know basic concepts but are important to to get them right. So if you go there, you can have a better idea or better explanation, I guess. But yeah, just in a nutshell, that's what they are. It's just the the position or the the direction at which the polygons are facing, right? So each polygon has a, you know, it's a normal that is perpendicular to the surface. Um, you do retopo, if so, do you do it in ZBrush and a third party software? Yes, I do retopology. Uh, I do it in ZBrush, to be honest. They're they're really cool, different tools, but I mean, for me, it's just easier and faster to do it in in, in ZBrush. Um, I've tried other ones, and you know, it's just in in terms of the on the speed that I can work at ZBrush, it's it's a lot easier for me, and with the tools that I'm comfortable with. So, yeah, maybe if I spend I don't know six months or three months or whatever trying another software I might just get really you know fast with that but at this point Zbrush is just perfect for for me to do retopology. Um, if I'm doing like hard surface retopology I might think of other more like box modeling type of tools to do it but not a, you know most of the things that I do are organic anyway so I'll do it in Zbrush. Oh, thanks mate glad you like it. All right so let's go ahead and um, we don't need to duplicate this because we have the the folder. So if anything, we just create the same boolean. So what I'm going to do is just redynamize this with 
similar resolution that what we had. I don't think that was too much. There we go. So now this is a normal dynamic object. I'm going to turn on symmetry, smooth a few things, and I'm going to try to smooth these borders a bit. Not too much, I don't want to make them super thin. Alrighty. So I think that works. Uh, we can start like making this or turning this into a more interesting creature, I guess. Um, yeah. So I'm going to bring in the clay brush and we can start doing these type of things, right? Just to generate some interesting look. But because this has already thickness in a way, or is thin, if I rotate around, I'm basically messing around with the polygons underneath. So I'm going to undo that. Um, so that's why I have in my UI this back face masking, which for you guys should be under the brush palette. Auto masking, back face mask, right? So enable that. And then we can, we still have to be careful, but we can do these type of things a lot more freely and then we're not affecting the, the backside. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start adding some volumes here. I'm also pressing the Alt key just to, to flatten some of these edges a bit. But again, this becomes just the, the usual sculpting. There's some edges there that are a little bit weird, so I'm going to redynamish. There we go. And it's going to try to make a bit of a difference here. Uh, just so that we can continue with the with this line of the original pumpkin, and just keep smoothing things just to keep everything everything clean, even though it is dynamic. If you wanna, you know, don't have to worry about the the thickness and all of that. What I've been just saying. Um, you can do these these type of things before you pull in the mesh, right? So you don't have to worry about the the thickness, and then when you boolean, you will just you just need to clean those um, a bit more. But that's it. All right, I'm gonna add a bit of a. Actually, let's bring in the dam standard, and also use the back face masking. And we're going to start adding some kind of wrinkle here for the eyes. There we go. And we can also maybe refine this area as well. Let's do a redynamesh. All right. I think this one needs a bit more volume. So I'm starting to depart from that, you know, more pumpkin look and turn this into a more of a creature 
or a character. So I'm starting to think more about the what would be the anatomy of this pumpkin. Um, all right, something like that. And I'm going to add some more volume here just to emphasize the fact that the guy is kind of like smiling and sort of like pulling all this, the skin in a way. Yeah. Maybe turn on in the clay build up with back face just so that I can work a bit faster building volumes. I'm still like looking into you know setting up the the blocking really so this is even though it's a bit high resolution for my taste uh, at least during this stage of blocking uh, this is still a, a very sketchy thing that could change quite a bit All right let's starting to to look a bit interesting can take advantage of that line in there that sort of fits nicely and if I wanted to I can just separate this and split the mesh so that we can work a bit easier but I think I think it works as it is just gonna refine the the volume and if you have questions about this process or anything else that I can I mean if it is not a if it is related to this to this pro process that I'm showing you I'm happy to talk you through some of that try to answer those questions while I'm sculpting because this could be very repetitive anyway it's just adding volumes with a clay builder brush using the smooth brush to refine and that's it I think I want to sharpen a bit the bottom lip, so I'm going to hold the old key using the damp standard brush. And that sort of sharpens that a bit more. Same thing for the top one, I think. Alright, so I'm going to refine the edges here, or the corner of the mouth, really. Um, yeah, and I think maybe increase the resolution just a bit. Or you can use the Sculptris Pro as well, but I think this one is fine for now. And let's go ahead and refine this corner as well of the eyes. I'm going to turn off the back face masking just so that we can work a bit better here. Get in there. Um, let's have a look. Uh, 
um, notebooks it's cold but maybe consider adding some warts some warts to the pumpkin skin um, we got this type of squash in our garden with warts it's an idea okay um, yeah yeah I'm, I was thinking of like adding some more details afterwards um, this is more like setting up the the bases first and then yeah adding those type of details would be cool and some more like ridges and stuff like that would be definitely something I'll be looking into how you make double action brushes uh, it's in the in the brush palette you can use the modifiers um, probably wouldn't have time for what I want to finish today to show you that but if you go to this uh, brush palette uh, in the modifiers you have a bunch of things that you can use uh, this is just one way to do it you can also use the um, the stroke palette and the alpha palette to add some settings in there um, so you can just add this smooth for example this smooth brush and then when you add when you sculpt it will automatically smooth so that's kind of like adding that double action depending on what pressure you use so just to give you an example this is the normal effect of the clay brush if I increase the smoothness it's just going to as I sculpt it's going to auto smooth that so this is one of the the simplest way the simplest way to you know work with this um, you know create that volume very quickly at the same time that you smooth so there's a bunch of these sliders that you can use but that's just a, just one that is probably easier um, in terms of what smooth brush I use um, I think the standard brush the standard smooth brush is just what I use the most when I have a high res mesh um, maybe at this point I could use it as well is the smooth strong um, so the smooth strong is something that comes with ZBrush I don't know if it's loaded automatically now oh, actually let's see first mm, it probably is Anyway, you can just go to the smooth brushes here. Uh, it comes with ZBrush. Smooth brush, smooth stronger. Right? And that's just going to smooth things a lot faster at a higher resolution. But you can, you know, you can use this smooth brush and then turn down the intensity so you get the best of both worlds. So you can smooth really, you know, quite a bit with that brush. Uh, but then you have control of how much you're actually using it or how much you're actually smoothing just by using the pressure uh, another smooth brush that I use quite often is the directional brush the, or the smooth directional that is a great brush for hard surface stuff and for clothing so if you're interested in doing any any of that that is definitely a really cool thing to to try because it would respect some of the things based on the directionality of the brush uh, I'm just going to exaggerate this a little bit so when I use the masking like that invert the mask maybe blur it slightly and use the brush the move brush and give this guy a more of a Mina look now we can do the same thing with this I think not sure if this one is gonna work but maybe just make something a bit more interesting here I think that's starting to look a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna go back to the clay builder brush and play around a little bit more with the volumes here around the mouth and maybe exaggerate these these lips. Uh, but we can come back to the lips again um, once we play some um, some teeth. 
maybe that's that will be the next step. Um, yeah, we have about three minutes. I reckon with what we're doing, we can definitely add some polypane and some more details to this to this thing. Um, but yeah, I think let's add in, let's add some some teeth. Mm, what would be the? I mean, I can show you a couple of things. Uh, let's just keep it simple. I'm gonna go ahead and mm, let's see. Let's just use a uh, usual dynamic. So I'm gonna append maybe a ring 3D, and I'm gonna hide part of it. Delete hidden. Delete hidden. Turn that into a dynamic just to close it. Make sure symmetry is enabled like that. So that's gonna be the kind of like the gums of the creature. Um, that's just a very simple and easy way to do it and we can take the trim dynamic or the edge polish and just flatten this a bit more. Same thing here at the top. And then we can just place this a bit better. Let's go into transparency. I'm going to flatten it in the Z axis a bit just to try to follow that curvature. something like that and I'm gonna go back to the pumpkin using the move brush and let's just protect the top area and we can push this a bit all right go back to the gums all right um, I think we can start with the with the ones at the top actually. So I'm gonna bring in the gizmo, turn off symmetry, rotate this around, push that up. Yeah, I think that would help. Would help a little bit. A bit closer. All right, turn on symmetry. Use the move brush to just position this better just a quick a quick tip or a quick tip <laughs> a quick tweak of the of the position of this you know piece and then we can just you know keep using this or adding others other sub tools um, to create the teeth in this case um, I reckon let's just go in here and let's use the the normal clay brush just to push in just some indication of what the teeth might be increase the re dynamic resolution and then with the standard brush So very simple, very simple techniques really. Just the sculpting. Um, we can use the move brush to to tweak a bit the the sizing of this. All right, and to create the teeth, um, we can do that in a separate one with an insert brush. Let's select the sphere. Turn that into a poly mesh 3D. Let's scale that like so. The Z axis as well. Uh, we can use the taper deformer as well to give it that shape. Yeah, just a quick 
way to create a generate a teeth. Um, we can also use the bend arc, give it a bit of a curvature here. Accept that, and we can use the you know the edge polish or something to flatten this a bit more. At least at the back. So not necessarily like a creature teeth, but we can we can tweak them and improve that after we place it. Um, we can also flatten this a bit more, maybe with the move brush. All right, so this should be enough just to place that that teeth, and then we can, you know, make it more feature and change it a bit once once it's placed. Uh, all right, so uh, this could be a dynamesh. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, let's let's just do a quick zero measure. There we go. Something like this should be enough. I don't need it to be that um, that low res. And I'm gonna click on create new. So now I have a a brush to create these teeth. That's all I need really. Go back to my working file, and I'm going to click and drag. That's the teeth. Let's place it a bit better. Turn off polyframe. All right. Uh, let's go into solo mode. Uh, you can keep using the insert brush, for example. If you create one of these, you can keep doing that. Um, or you can just hold control, click and drag, and that's just going to be a lot easier. Um, to scale it, once you do that, you can enable local symmetry so that it scales based on the volume of that piece rather than the center of the world. So it's going to change things uh, yeah, based on the local axis. Hold control. It's kind of like a bit thicker now. All right, let's say something like that. Um, obviously, we c everything is a separate object unless I dynamesh it, which I'm going to avoid doing. So let's actually turn that off. I want to click on auto groups, and that's going to give me different polygroups. So before I tweak this or anything like that, um, let's center it. Right, I'm going to scale everything up. I just want to generate the ones at the bottom, so I can duplicate this entire subtool, rotate it around, right? Scale it slightly. Push it in. So work on that like so. Right, so it's just a quick placement of that. Uh, so now we have teeth, but we can go ahead and tweak that. So I'm going to use the, or select the, actually, go back to the move brush. Select the head, and with symmetry, we can, you know, refine that that laugh, so we can see more of that those lower teeth, and just give it some expression. All right, and I can take the that um, that subtool with the with the tooth or the teeth, and play around with that as well. Maybe push them forward. So I'm, I'm manipulating the entire thing, right? But I'll, I'll go into individual pieces in just a second. Same thing with the bottom one. Let's go into solo mode. Oops.
Okay. Just gonna make these smaller by just bringing them closer. That's all. Cool. All right, so now that we have these, we can basically go ahead and uh, start breaking apart the, the symmetry a little bit more, which is gonna make it look more interesting. So let's select that. Um, let's actually duplicate, put them into the original, duplicate original, so that we can go back to, to this if we need to. Um, so with the move topological brush, uh, we can use Saki curve as well, turn off symmetry. We can start playing around with this to you know make a, a more crooked laugh or something again more interesting. So um, because we have different polygroups, we every time that we do an insert brush in ZBrush is going to generate a different polygroup, and this is essentially a separate polygon. Uh, using the topology brush, it would respect that continuity, and I can just you know tweak anything that I uh, or as soon as I click on something, ZBrush is going to analyze the, the the topology, and if it's not con there's no continuation of it, it's just going to affect that that piece. So I'm just going to whoops start playing around with these creature teeth, make them more interesting. These ones are meant to be the canines. But again, all of this is, you know, is basic sculpting uh, techniques, really. Nothing, again, nothing fancy. Just today I wanted, I mean, I wanted to show you some, some techniques that are pretty cool like the one that I use for the booleans, but for the most part, you can achieve the same result and do very intricate things without really having to master all the features and techniques in ZBrush. This is, you know, blocking and sculpting and moving and pushing points, basically. <laughs> it's gonna exaggerate the size of this front teeth. Right? And we can also, with the same technique, maybe in solo mode, uh, we can readjust these, the gums. All right. Okay, we have 20 minutes. I'm gonna <laughs> do the other teeth and then we do a, a quick pass of poly paint just to get something cool going before the end of the stream. And then uh, we can potentially do, um, you know, the, the skinny body in the next one. All right, I think that's that's looking all right. Um, let's select the ones at the bottom, do the same thing. So move topological without symmetry. I'm gonna do these ones a little bit faster. And just try to make it look even more crooked than the ones at the top. And you won't see me, you know, you will see these, but not as prominent as the, as the one in the front, really.
All right, I think that's you know more interesting. Um, let's have a look at the chat, and then we do some last minute tweaks and poly paint. Um, Comic Slain, how do you deal with being overwhelmed with so many sculpting challenges out there, knowing there is no time to do it all? Um, I've done, to be honest, I, I mean it's great that there is so many challenges, challenges, and and all of that, and uh, yeah, it's it's good to pick good ones to to try to do, but. Uh, I really don't don't feel overwhelmed just because yeah like if I, if I'm gonna do a challenge if I wanted to do a challenge if I want to participate in something or if I just want to push myself to do something I, w I would look for something specific or if I'm not looking for anything but I see something that you know catches my eye then I would do it I'm not necessarily um, trying to do more than one challenge at a time or something like that just because it will be overwhelming exactly so um the yeah there's no there's no clear answer i guess for that question um for instance with the with the extra milers the the students at the extra mile i try to do these uh, these challenges every now and again just to uh, because again the course itself is there's no there's no time limit. There's no deadlines. You go at your own pace, and that's kind of like the the beauty of the course that it's the the structure. You can follow it as your own pace. So if you yeah, if you're really you know really fast, and yeah, if you just work really fast, you can go faster or you know be very slow. It doesn't really matter. But it is really important to have those deadlines and those things to to push you and create things on a on a tight deadline because at the end of the day that's the reality of the industry so i do those challenges within the context of the course for example um and they have been proven to be incredibly you know useful and powerful um for instance daniele colombo one of my students in the last challenge we did um he he, he won the, the first prize and the the rookies featured him in a, like an article that he sort of went through and and explained his process right so it's kind of like another way to give back to the community and so it, it is really helpful in that sense but it's not something that I, i'm not encouraging everyone or like for example to to go and look for challenges and just do them all just to participate and, and put yourself out there because it can be very overwhelming like you said and also um if you focus on too many things, it's gonna be really hard to to get something of quality, basically. Um, so right now, what I um, there is a there's a mini challenge in the in the extra mile course, um, which I provided some assets and it's just for them to play around with it and and create something out of those assets. But in a way, it's just a pretty easy thing. It's not um, I'm not asking to you know build everything from scratch, do textures, do render, and all of that. Um, the challenges are very specific for for certain things. So if it is a challenge for texturing, right, um, I would try to generate the assets so that it has UVs and everything else. Give them to to the students, for example, and they can concentrate on just texture. So I guess after all this <laughs> blabbering, what I'm saying is, if you want to focus on texturing, if you want to focus on sculpting, if you want to focus on character design, then look for challenges that would meet those requirements or that would make you meet those requirements um, and that's really my advice I don't know it's just a very random answer sorry um, Paolo do you have any course or tutorials will you finish this on next stream uh, so yes and yes <laughs> so I do have if you want to have a look at the courses that I have online like more if you're asking for like a full on comprehensive courses uh, you can go to the 3dconceptartist.com uh, let me just type in the chat so that's my website where you can find the courses if you want just like uh, tutorials tips uh, guides that are also you know pretty in depth but more like um you know, not like a structured course, just like basically what I'm doing right now. You can go to the Seabridge Guides, obviously. That's basically where I do all of that. Uh, or the streams. So, and to answer your other questions, the... Um, yeah, so we, we will be continuing this in the next one. All 
All right. So let's go ahead and um, do some quick polishing on this guy. Um, I'm going to take this and use the damp standard brush. We still have um, symmetry in some areas. Just refine some of these lines. Before I do a quick poly paint pass, uh, just as a, as a working, a working poly paint, I would call it. And we can work with you know some more more lines um, in the next stream. We can polish this. All right, and I think we can take the move brush without accu curve and a very large brush size, and then just refine the the overall shape of this dude. Right, um, but yeah, I think that covers it. Let's do the poly paint. We have ten minutes. That's plenty for a quick pass of polypane. Um, you know what, maybe it would be cool to do a couple of floating eyes and then we can lead up the, the pumpkin from behind which is yeah, going to complete that cool effect. So I'm just going to do a sphere. Going to solemn. Let's do a quick save as well. And I'm going to write... Hang on. Solo. <laughs> I'm going to scale this down. And we're going to work with quick, um, not radial symmetry, but clay brush. Just going to push this. This is going to be the, the eye. And it's going to be one of those, I don't know. I'm just thinking about um, those pieces. I don't know how to call it, but in a pumpkin. <laughs> so let's dynamic this. Hopefully you see what I mean when once I actually do it. I don't know how to call this. Uh, it, it's kind of like a piece of bark. But anyway, uh, obviously more stylized. So this is going to be the the eye of this creature, the pumpkin creature, the pumpkin jack. Although, you know, it's a little bit more sinister, the laugh and everything, than, than the actual jack character that I mentioned at the beginning. So we sort of like moved away from that idea <laughs> as well. All right, so lots of just the sculpting today. But yeah, hopefully you find this somehow interesting. I know it's a little bit boring to watch sometimes just to do the same thing over and over, but um, hopefully that also shows that this, you know, you can achieve the same complexity and the same things that you sometimes see on, on really cool pieces online, you know, just with the, you know, the fact that you can be patient and, and do the work and do the sculpting. Not, not everything is just fancy tricks and yeah, you shouldn't rely on those, really. Those are just things that you can find on the way and um, help you, 
you know, in general, improve your workflow. All right, I think that's, I'm gonna leave it as it is. Let's see if it looks all right. Okay, I think I think that might work. We can tweak this later. All right. So uh, now we have all the pieces we need uh, so far to do a quick pass of polypaint. So I'm gonna jump into that in the last seven minutes we have. So I'm gonna take the standard brush. I'm gonna turn it into a polypaint tool just by turning these things off and enabling RGB. So now I don't affect the, the actual mesh. Um, no worries. What tablet do I use? Um, I use for like the normal tablet is just the Wacom Intuos Pro, I think. Um, but most of the time when I'm doing these type of things like in ZBrush or Photoshop, I use the Cintiq, uh, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, Cintiq, I think it's called Cintiq, Wacom Cintiq Pro Touch 24, I think, 24 inches. Um, the 32 inches is pretty cool, but it's for me it's too big and at the end I just end up with my, my shoulder ends up hurting. So 24 for me is the, the sweet spot. <laughs> hey David, how's it going? So David is one of the extra milers. He just finished one of the, like uh, a really cool, what is it like a, it's not a Keiju, it's, um, it's based on the mythology, like an Aztec mythology, I think. Anyway, it's a it's a pretty cool uh, creature. If you go to the to the uh, 3D concept artist on Instagram, like that's where um, that's where we post all the student work and finished work. Um, I think that's the latest one. Yeah, ax yeah, an axo axolotl axolot axolotl keju. I don't know how to pronounce that properly. Axolotl axolotl keju. Yeah, it's super cool. So if you want to see some of the work that the students are actually making in the course, you can go to the Instagram and that's where I share um, finished work. Anyway, so let's turn this uh, into skin material. I'm gonna start with a basic block out of the color palette. So let's go for orangey type, obviously. Fill object. This one is gonna be a green desaturated color fill object. Um, the eyes could be just a dark orange the gums um you know what we can actually split these things because we have polygroups so i can hold control and shift isolate this uh split hidden do the same thing with the bottom one split hidden uh, so that way we can just apply like a, just a darker color for the gums Fill object, fill object, and for the teeth, we're gonna go for some rotten yellowish teeth. All right, so that is very, you know, very simple. We just basically blocked in the color, and that already looks more interesting. Um, and then we can just obviously do a lot more uh, with the with the polypaint. So I'm gonna enable symmetry because we still have symmetry in most of this creature. I'm gonna select the, the head, choose a different color. I'm gonna go for a red, desaturated. I'm just gonna emphasize, kind of like manually painting an ambient occlusion with a darker color, like so. And darken the around the the eyes. All 
right? And of course, I'm using pressure just to variate the intensity of that color that I'm adding. And again, this is just a, a working polygroup, like, uh, sorry, a working polypaint, um, just to keep us, you know, as a reference for the design. But later on, we can definitely, you know, once we have more details and more crevices and stuff like that, we can make use of things like the mask by, you know, smoothness or mask by cavity. And it's going to be, you know, we can create something a bit more interesting. I'm going to darken this a lot more. It's going to solo mode. Um, if we want to, let's just try to darken all of that inside. Uh, we can use the same technique that I just showed you, or that I showed you at the beginning, just flipping the normals. Oh no, we don't, we can't do it right now because we have, we actually have a thickness, forgot. <laughs> but you could do the same thing. If you don't have thickness, you can do the same thing. Um, just flipping the normals and painting instead of sculpting. Now, if I had polygroups, if I preserved the polygroups when I was doing dynameshing, didn't think about that really, but uh, it's not a big deal. If I had polygroups, I could have just paint the inside with a darker color. I can try to do that. Yeah. Um, you can also use the back face masking, for example, to do that. In fact, let's just do that. I'll show you a simple way to do it. Let's hide this piece. And then if I do this, it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't go through the other side. So that's just a quick way to darken up that inside. You can invert that, oops, invert it and do the same thing here. So like always in ZBrush, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. There's a little bit of this moving through, so I'm just gonna refine the color here. All right, so that's looking cool. Uh, I'm gonna add a couple of highlights with a saturated, almost yellowy color in just certain areas. Not too much, I'm not pressing too hard adding those highlights. Maybe here at the top where the sun might catch, you know, might decolorate this a bit more. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, this one, for example, the, the twill here at the top, we select that. Uh, we can actually, because it's more detail in a way, let's add, um, make sure I have selected. Okay, we have to wrap it up now, but very quickly. Uh, we could potentially use the uh, mask by cavity. So click on mask by cavity, maybe blur that a little bit, invert it, hide the mask, and then use a darker, a darker green just to highlight some of those crevices in there. Or not highlight it, but just darken them. Again, kind of like a faking and ambient occlusion type of thing. Uh, we can also use the mask by smoothness or the peaks and valleys. Maybe that one, I'm gonna sharpen the mask and that would you know, help me to add some variation to that green color, make it some desaturated yellow. Right, and if we wanted to, we can do the same thing with the head, right? Pick some valleys, we get, you know, let's change the range and the coverage a bit, maybe more coverage. Right, um, and we don't have to paint. We can just use that mask. I just hit that mask, but it's still there. And use something like the adjust colors. Uh, let's hide mask, and we can just tweak the you know saturation, contrast, the intensity of the RGB. Just click in on the RGB intensity. We saturate this a bit more, and I'm gonna contrast it with the green. No, not with the, with the blue one. Although there's not much blue, so let's contrast it with the red. 
and maybe add a bit of a tint. Click OK. Clear the mask. So we just did that very quickly with those um, with that color. And again, you can always come back and refine over what you just did just to blur some of those things. But I think that works. Um, in fact, let's just do the same thing with a different range, just to wrap it up. Or even using the, sorry, the smoothness, that's the one that I was going for. Alright, let's invert that mask, and let's use a greenish, desaturated dark color, just to add some, some bits and pieces here. And this is ultimately how I would go about refining a polypaint work. Clear that mask. And maybe let's put in some purple colors here as well. All right, um, for the teeth, same deal. Just playing with the mask, um, bits and valleys, invert. I'm just going very quick here, but just to give you an idea of how to refine the, the polypane, even though it's just a work in progress. Let's select the gums. And we can use more like a purple color. Yeah, let's go for a darker purple color. I think that looks more interesting. Uh, let's select the other one. Solo. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna leave it here because yeah, we just we should wrap it up now. Um, just one more thing for the for the eyes. I think make them just red. I maybe. <laughs> Hang on. All right, cool. That's it. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Hopefully, this has been of help. Um, we'll definitely continue working on this guy, uh, maybe next stream, and just add some, some quick pose with a body or something like that, uh, just to complete the, the idea and maybe refine the polypane if we have time. But that's pretty much it. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to leave it here, guys, and I'll see you uh, next week. Uh, just so you know, for whoever is interested in the extra mile that I mentioned at the beginning, um, it's going to be open for for enrollment, I think, um, somewhere you know, this month, maybe in a couple month, in a couple weeks before the end of the month or in a week's time, uh, depending on how I go about um, setting everything up. But, um, yeah, I will open it for enrollment, and it's going to be the, the last time that the, the course is at the price that is currently at because I I keep adding content. In fact, for this enrollment, um, I'm adding a, a bundle update of rendering. So I'm going to walk you through um, rendering, you know, concepts and all of that in Maverick Render, which is fantastic, um, Blender Eve, Blender Cycles, and Adobe Dimension, so I'm going to take all of those into an update. So because I keep updating the course, and I'm, you know, and we also do the the live sessions, um, this is the last time that it's going to be at this price, and then I will have to bump it up a little bit just to to compensate with all the the extra work that is being put into the into the course. So just letting you know, um, the course right now is, um, like I said, it's going to be the same price as the 
the one before. There are two options. Uh, one is, I mean, is this the same price really, but two payment options. So 727, 727 for the one payment. You have the, um, two payment option of 412. It, it will be all, all in the website. And if you're part of the email list, you'll get um, all the information in there. Uh, all right. So hopefully that's been of help. I'll see you guys next uh, 